believe it or not, there is a right and wrong way to build out your text styles or your type scale for your design system in Figma. So today we're gonna to look at the proper way to do so using the tool called TypeScale. And we're also gonna start off by looking at what sizes of text are accessible and some of the theory or different types of text you will encounter when building out your design system. It's a really great lesson today. Let's dive right in. Before we get too deep into the weeds, let's cover some of the different types uh, of text sizes. So right off the bat, we have our display. So these are generally much larger than used for marketing sites, just really unique cases where you do need much larger text. They generally offer a little bit more depth to your design system, although they're not generally used all the time. Headings, on the other hand, are different than display because they're usually a little bit smaller uh, and they're often used for categorization and separation of elements. Now think about a dashboard. Now here, conveniently, I have an example of a dashboard. So here we have all these different cards on our dashboard. So primary account, secondary account, balance over time, recent deposits. These would be our headings. Smaller headings at that, but I'd still like to look at them as our headings. Why? Because they offer a little bit of separation between elements. You know, it lets the user know that the information being displayed is a little bit different. So that's generally how I like to look at uh, our headings. And then of course we have our body or paragraph text, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I won't need to go too deep on that. Now, let's look at an example of how all three can peacefully coexist. Now, I'm actually in the process of redesigning the UI Collective Web Experience because it's not something we've put too much uh, effort into in the past. So here right off the bat, we have our display one, you know, much larger text where designers grow. And to me, this looks like 72 pixels. Then we go down to our H3. So sign up and gain exclusive access to your community uh, of design system tools, so on and so forth. Then we go on to our body. So top designers boost their skills with the UI collective. Then we move on to the next section. Again, thinking about our headings that offer a little bit of separation and categorization. So this is a new section. So we have a heading now, and then we have body to go with it. And then an H4 for some of our points. So again, your display headings and body should peacefully coexist. You know, you don't need to always do, uh, combine your display one with an H1 and a body one. You know, you can really bounce between the different sizes uh, as you see fit. But again, this is just a quick example as to how you can use all three uh, nice and easily uh, together. Next, uh, we're going to look at uh, accessibility and what types of font sizes are actually accessible. So now let's look at accessibility. Now, when it comes to uh, building out your font scales and using font that is acceptable or accessible, this is a general golden rule that I like to follow. So anything 16 pixels or above, generally accessible. I mean, you still need to worry about your contrast ratios and all that stuff. But for the most part, if you're using a size 16 pixel font, that font size is generally accessible. The gray zone, as I like to call it, is anywhere between 12 and 14 pixels. The reason being is that some fonts scale down better than others. Now, there's a really good example of this is if I actually open up Apple's uh, typography guidelines, their caption too is actually an 11 pixel font. And it's something I've actually been asked before where it's, well, Apple's using size 10 and 11 font. So why can't I use that with something like Roboto? And the reason being that I like to say is, you know, Apple's got millions of dollars to invest in their accessibility and testing accessibility. And just as an example, I have no idea if this is the truth, but maybe uh, when they do hit that size 11 or 10 uh, point font, that the variant or version of their San Francisco font could change. And all of a sudden that's what makes it accessible because they're using just in a different version of the font. I have no idea if that's the case, but that's just an example as to how things can change. So again, a general rule of thumb is anything 16 pixels or above is accessible. 12 to 14 is a little bit of a gray zone. You know, I still do use, do use 12 or 14 pixels in some cases, but I just am super careful about accessibility or anything below 12 pixels is absolutely not accessible. Um, so again, if you are using 12 or 14 pixel font, uh, just be careful, do some accessibility tests uh, to ensure that your platform or your app is still meeting accessibility guidelines. Uh, next, let's look, let's look at uh, a tool we like to use when building out uh, our type scales. Now, if you're looking for a real easy way to build out your type scales, uh, we like to use this tool called TypeScale. And I promise you, we are not affiliated with this tool uh, at all, but it makes life super easy when you're building out your individual type scales. To walk you through it, essentially what you can do is you can actually set your base body size. So as I mentioned in accessibility, uh, anything 16 pixels or above is generally okay. So what I'm actually gonna do is set that 16 pixels to my body size. 
And if you notice when I did that is that the scale adjusted uh, accordingly. Now, there are all these different scales that you can choose from. So things like minor second, major second, all the way to the golden ratio, which is quite large as you can see. Uh, but I like to use uh, major third. Now, one thing I'd like to call out as well is as you can see, it gives you the sizing in REMS. Now, that's great if you're, if you're a developer, but Figma currently does not support REMS. So what you're actually gonna have to do is select pixels. Now, and another thing that you're probably asking is pixels is really, or decimals within your uh, pixel sizes is really difficult to work with. So what you can actually do is align the numbers to a grid. So uh, round up or round down. So in the case of the paragraph, again, I set that body size to a base of 16. Then I can see my H6 is 20. So that's a nice four pixel grid. And that's what I'm going to uh, align with for now. Again, you can use different grid sizes. You can go two, you can go five, whatever. Uh, but I really like to use uh, four. It gives me lots of flexibility. So as an example, 16 to, to 20 and our H6, so that's a nice four pixels. Then it goes to H5. And the closest multiple of four to that 25 pixels is 24. So my H5 would then be 24. My H4 would then be 32. Again, still following uh, that multiple. Uh, and then our H3 would be 40. So on and so forth. So again, you're not necessarily using those uh, individual decimals. Um, we're just rounding up or down depending on the grid uh, that we can choose. One thing I'd like to call out as well, as again, this is just a very, um, very basic type scale, is what you can actually do with this tool if you are on the paid version, is you can actually add uh, some larger sizes as well uh, to give you yourself like those display fonts. So again, this is just a real quick overview uh, of how to work with this tool type scale and why it is so important and makes building out type scales easy to use. Uh, next, we're actually gonna look, out, look at building out uh, our type scale in Figma using this tool here. Now let's look at actually building out uh, our text styles uh, using the type scale tool uh, that we were looking at before. So let me open that back up. So a couple things right off the bat uh, is, as you can see, I did add three additional uh, sizes that we're going to use for our display. In order to add these is you do need to be on uh, the paid version of type scale. And I promise you, we are not associated with this tool uh, at all. Other things as well is there is a little bit of math involved uh, in order to calculate the line height for our, our displays, our headings, and then for our paragraph text. So to prep, our line height is going to be, our, in order to calculate our line height, essentially what we're doing is we're gonna uh, take the size of our uh, body font or our heading font and multiply it by a multiplier. So for our body, I like to use the multiplier of 1.2. So essentially what we would do is we would take 16 and multiply that by 1.2 to get the line height. And again, if it doesn't make sense, we're gonna do this together. Um, so no need to worry. And then for our headings, we're gonna take the size and then multiply that by 0 0.8 to get the line height for that particular uh, text size. Anyways, I'll take you through an example uh, right now. So for our display one, I can see it's currently at 119, again, based on uh, our major third scale with a body size of 16. So again, still following that four pixel grid, we're gonna round this up to 120. So let me open back up Figma. And this is gonna be display one. And we're gonna set this to 120. There we go, just like that. And now in order to calculate uh, the line height, what we need to do is take 120 and multiply it by 0 0.8, which is going to give us the value of 96. So let me just like this, and then let's call this, set this to 96. And then there we have uh, our text size and our line height for our display one style. So let's go ahead and add this. So display one, and we're going to create that style. Beautiful. So we have our display one. Let's now look at uh, our display two. So let me open this back up. So for our display two, again, this is gonna be 96, still following that four pixel grid pattern. And then 96 times 0 0.8 is equal to 76. 76, and then 96. There we go. And then there we have our display two. So let's go ahead, set this to display two. 
Oh yeah, this is just a really basic, simple type scale. Um, as you're building out your design system, of course, this can get pretty complex, but it's really just meant to give you uh, the foundation uh, to building out your own. So next, let's look at a display three. So our display three, let me open back up type scale. So display three, so 76.29, so still following that four pixel grid pattern. It's gonna be 76, 76 times the line height multiple of 0 0.8. This is gonna give us 60. Let me pull this back up here, 76, and then 60. Beautiful, and there is our uh, display three. Beautiful, just like that. Uh, next, let's look at uh, our headings. So let's uh, copy this, detach this, change this to heading. So still the exact same thing uh, as we were looking at before for our heading. So our H1, this is 61.04, which, which we're going to round down to 60. 60 times 0 0.8 is equal to 48. So this is going to be 60, and then 48. And there is uh, our heading 1. Now let's look at uh, our heading 2. Pull this back up. There we go. So our H2, so this is 48. So we're going to round 48.83. So we're going to round that down to 48. 48 times 0 0.8 is 40. So 48 times 40. There's our heading 2. Create that style. Oops, I didn't create the style for our heading 1. Excuse me. So let's uh, add this now. This is going to be our heading 1. And this is going to be our heading 2. There we go, beautiful. Uh, next, uh, let's look at uh, our heading three. Our heading three. So this is 39. So we're gonna round that up to 40. 40 times 0 0.8 is 32. It's gonna be 40. And then set this to 32. And this is our heading three. There we go, beautiful. Now, uh, oops, did I call this wrong? I called this heading two. Oh, excuse me, let's call that to heading three. There we go. Uh, then let's do uh, our heading four. And I won't flip back uh, to type scale. Hopefully you've got uh, the idea by now. So our heading four is going to be 32 and then 24. And we're gonna create this, set this equal to our heading four. And then our heading five, which is going to be uh, our 24 and our 20. Just like that. It's gonna be our heading five, beautiful. And then uh, our H6, so which is going to be uh, 20 back up, our heading six. So this is going to be our 20, and then 20 times 0 0.8 is 16. So I'm gonna just double check something here. So it's 24, there we go. Oops, I didn't change it. So 20, and this is going to be uh, our 16. There we go. So our heading five, and this is going to be our heading six. Beautiful. So there we have our displays uh, and our headings. Uh, next, let's look at what we're actually gonna do for our, our paragraph. So it's roughly uh, the same. So what we're gonna take is our base paragraph size of 16, but instead of multiplying it by 0 0.8, we're gonna multiply it by 1.2 to get uh, our line height. So let's take this, and this will be our paragraph uh, one, detach this. So 16, and then 16 times uh, 1.2 gives us the value of 20. So 16, set this to 20, and then this is going to be our paragraph one. There we go. 
And again, I know uh, I did mention that anything uh, below 60, you do need to test for accessibility. Um, but that being said, is I still really do expect to see a lot of 12s and 14s out there. You know, it's it's not uncommon. Uh, so we're actually also going to work with, uh, let's say, a paragraph uh, small. Paragraph small. And again, the uh, naming convention here can really vary based on your design system. Again, this is just a real quick example. So still following that four pixel uh, grid pattern. Let's go back to type scale. So this is 12. So again, 12.8, we're going to round down uh, to 12. 12 times 1.2 gives us the value of 16 for our line height. So this is going to be 12, and then 16, and then we're going to set this to our uh, paragraph small. Yeah, instead of our paragraph small, we're actually going to call it our paragraph 2. There we go. So there is an example as to how you can create uh, a nice type scale for your design system uh, and some of the math around calculating uh, your line height, again, using the tool type scale. Thanks for watching today's video. The second version of our design system tracker is now available where you can directly target the styles, variables, and components that have been detached or unlinked to guarantee consistency in your designs prior to dev handoff. I'll put a link for this in the description. What's going on, everyone? Just want to encourage everyone to sign up for our community at uicollective.co. Uh, you'll get access to myself and Mike for any questions you might have on tokens, variables, or more. And we have a ton of great free resources with more on the way. Uh, so join the community, stay notified, hope to see you online.